So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about some new music and female rap. So Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion dropped their new song called Bongos, and then Lotto and Sexy Red dropped the remix to Peaches and Eggplants by Young Nudie. Now, can I first start off by saying this? I want y'all to understand that I have never said that I am against sexualized music. You gotta just be one selective hearing person if you think that my commentary means that I am anti-sexy, anti-raunchy, anti-vulgar. I'm not. I just call things for what they are because why would I call something that is vulgar anything else but vulgar? Whether I like it or not, I'm going to call it what it is. And I understand my tone and how much emphasis I put on the imagery seems like it's very harsh, but it's not really that. It's just simply being real about what people are viewing. I would be a hypocrite to sit here and say that I am a thousand percent against all of this. And I've never once said that on YouTube. What I have said is that the girls need to be diversified themselves. They gotta be able to give me both and they can't be demeaning and talentless. And I'm gonna reiterate that. The girls have to be able to diversify themselves. They have to be able to give me both and they can't be demeaning and talentless. If you can show me that you're an intelligent, raunchy rapper, you might be number one on my artist playlist. I literally think Cupcake is one of the hardest rappers out because outside of the freak stuff, the girl can spit. She is talented. Some people were commenting about respectability and that is a little bit of it, but it's mainly about talent with me. There's really only a few girls that can give me that and that's the problem. When you drop the bar lower than Jib's chain that was hanging down low and wobbling to the flow, you start to not shine in the light and your songs aren't going to go platinum or gold. If you know, you know. But some of y'all think that the answer or the solution that I'm asking for is for these girls to be sisters of the convent. Um, no. Like, because no. In my last video about Sexy Red, some comments said, well, if you don't want to listen to this type of music, then listen to conscious music. And... <sighs> I'm gonna be real, I don't necessarily care for conscious music. You don't have to go to the opposite end and to the extreme as a solution. There should be people that are a happy medium. I'm not a conscious person, but I'm also not part of the raunchy vulgar side of it either. Whatever is in the middle where I can like both, but I'm not too much on either side, that's what I wanna see. Talk your stuff, tell me your poom poom is popping, but just give me a few bars of that. Then your other lyrics can be about you being a boss, you going through pain, you being in love, you throwing a diss. Is that too much to ask for? So when it comes to women in music, as of now, we know what is mainstream. I've talked about this and I want people to be realistic with their solutions. In my last video, when I talked about Sexy Red and her impact on black women's image, and I saw some of y'all solutions, not gonna lie, some of them were honestly dumber than dumb. Like Dumbo the Elephant, dumb, blue raspberry, dumb, dumb lollipop. Some people literally said, well, if you don't like her, just don't listen and just don't watch her videos. Oh my God. And I was like, the thing is, I never said that I didn't like Sexy Red. I said that she just adds into the stereotypical negative black female imagery. And I think that we should caution ourselves as black women about how far we wanna go with pushing that image out because it is detrimental. Never in the video did I say that she represents all black women. I said, I'm here for her being herself, but where's the diversity and other types of black women being mainstream. A lot of people were bringing up Rhapsody. A lot of people were bringing up No Name, but those women are not mainstream. That is my point. To tell somebody that you shouldn't watch someone or you shouldn't just listen to someone is like literally dumb because if I get on social media right now, knowing that I don't follow Sexy Red, I don't keep up with her, I still see the girl. I'm scrolling the other day. I didn't even notice that she was gonna be on this remix with Lotto and I saw her and I kept seeing her. I follow a lot of blog pages. I'm not just gonna unfollow blog pages just because they post certain individuals. That just doesn't even make sense, especially for what I do. Like even for the whole blue face and Krishan mess, I don't follow either one of them, but I still see their tweets as I'm scrolling on Twitter. You cannot expose virality and then offer the solution of, well, just don't watch or listen. Like girl, bye. <laughs> it's literally everywhere. Even when I don't want to hear it or see it. I was getting my hair done the other day and the braiders were quoting and dancing to Sexy Red. She is famous now, so it's impossible to just tell somebody, well, if you don't like this person, don't listen to their music. Clearly, I don't listen to her. I'm not bumping her. I don't just pull up her music. When she dropped her mixtape, I was interested because she was new. So I went and listened to it and I realized it wasn't for me and I moved on. But to say, oh, this one black woman doesn't represent all black women. I mean, duh, dimwit. However, she's not the only black woman or woman of color that plays into this imagery. She's like one of 20 that are mainstream and that's what we're speaking on. But that's not what this video is about tonight. <laughs>
<laughs> like, yo, I went out on a tangent. Like, this was not even on script. None of this was on script. But anyway, so I wanted to discuss these new songs and people's feedback because I told y'all that a lot of people's minds are shifting. And I knew that this would happen. I mean, I told you so. And I know I talk my stuff, but I know that people come around once they realize that, okay, this is the same thing. This is super redundant. So much so now I am super redundant because they're super redundant. And yes, I don't have to talk about them, but you don't also have to click on the video. Did you think about that before you clicked and commented? Okay. So anyway, I just want to talk about the shift and the buildup leading into both of these projects and how social media reacted once they were dropped. So I've broken this video down into one overall main talking point. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So my one and overall main talking point is the shift. So like I said, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion dropped their song Bongos and I think it was highly anticipated. The song has like a Brazilian vibe and it's definitely a mesh of a Latin sound with hip hop added. And I'm not gonna lie, I love the cover art. I thought the video was actually very, very good. It was vibrant, it was catchy and it drew my attention. And leave it up to Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion to always have great visuals. In terms of choreography, they always kill it. And that's what I did like about the project. But I do think the shift in people's perception of the song Bongos versus their previous song WAP is because obviously people are tired of the redundant sexualized image of female rappers but I also feel like it's because people have wavering expectations of what they really want in music right now and this is across the board I mean male rappers to me are also honestly trash the violent rap hasn't taken black men anywhere I will say some of them are pretty good and clever even with the violent and dark music but still it's also oversaturated on that end I get technical and critical because first I'm just an over analytical person as is but then second because I really go deep into researching an artist to see what they're really like and for somebody like Megan Thee Stallion who I know has bars and who I know is talented and who I know can switch it up I think the expectation wavers from the general public when these artists are either not living up to that or we can tell that they're no longer putting their personality into their music at this point both of these women have taught me so much about how to please the man that I don't even have like I know how to suck it ride it slurp it smack my tongue on it simply because of this music. So my opinion on bongos. So for Meg Thee Stallion first, obviously she was going to do well. She had one line where she said, thick joints in a black truck packed in, eat whoever in my way, Miss Pac-Man. And I was like, ah, okay, I get it. But I do think for Meg, she's dumbing herself down. And not because Cardi B is on the track, but because this is what the industry is and has become. I think they both thought that they were going to come out with the same reception that they got with WAP. But y'all repackaged the WAP song in different colors, a different name, a different version. And then this is the response. Now for Cardi, I think she's a great performer, but this is going to be the first time I say this, but am I the only one that thinks Cardi does not have the voice for a lot of songs that she makes? It's not that she has a bad voice, but I feel like she just sounds so forced so many times. Like I never know if she's really rapping or if she's really acting. Cardi has ghostwriters, so when I hear basic bars, I just don't get it. You literally can hire me. I will be honored. And I'm not even saying that to be shady. I'm saying, why is it that Cardi B has inconsistent verses? Tomorrow too was hard. I thought it was fire. Like, I didn't even care that she didn't write it. But other songs, including this one, I'm like, nah, that ain't it, y'all. Listen, uh, man. Uh, I feel like Cardi freestyles her cadence and flows. And one thing I can say between this song and a lot of other female rap songs is I hate the slow bars. I was listening to Cardi's verse and I was like, this would have been so much better if she performed it faster. But I really couldn't catch a real flow. I noticed in Cardi's interview leading up to this song, this woman really can't talk. And I don't know why I ever thought that she was writing anything because it's very hard for her just to get a sentence out. And I say this because I do think it plays into some of the reason why her music doesn't always hit for me. Me personally this is just my opinion I already know I'm a hater so you don't have to tell me so before I read what some people were saying I do want to note that Cardi B tried to promote this song as different than what people were expecting and opposite of what we got she did an interview with Billboard and she talked about the song and responded to people's anticipation when the cover art was dropped now looking at the cover art I don't know who this girl thought she was fooling but we knew this song was gonna be sexual. I don't know if she tried to throw us off to create more interest, but yeah, I don't know. So the article is titled, Cardi B cautions fans not to expect Megan Thee Stallion Bongo's collab to be WAP part two. It's a different theme. The Jealousy rapper also talked to DJ Wu Kid about the beautiful video for the song out Friday, September 8th and tried to get a Eminem collab happening. Cardi B sat down with DJ Wu Kid for an upcoming episode of Wu's House podcast and the two dove right into the details behind Cardi's upcoming collab with Megan Thee Stallion. When Wu Kid said that he read that the lyrics to the song might out the XX 
XXX lines the pair served up on their hit single WAP, Cardi cautioned that fans should not expect the track to be a straight sequel to the 2020 smash that debuted at number one on Billboard Hot 100. I wonder how people are going to react to this vibe because they're really like expecting WAP. Like, oh, here they go again, talking this and that. Cardi said of the whispers she's hearing from fans about what the song might be like. We are talking a little, you know, about some poom poom, but not like WAP type stuff. She promised, noting that she recently got hired to perform at a billionaire's party in Cancun for white soccer moms and their kids who all love WAP. The Woo Kid video was briefly public, but appeared to be private at press time. The DJ also wondered what the bongos video would look like given the wild WAP visuals, and Cardi assured him that it is beautiful. She also teased that the sound of the song would likely throw people off because the single cover image gives off a WAP vibe, but it's not. Cardi said of the two cover images released so far in which the women rock rainbow color hair and skimpy outfits while straddling each other. It's a different theme and the video is like a whole complete different type of theme. Cardi added about the intricate, beautiful video that will drop along with the song. Cardi also said that when she and Megan collaborate, it's not just an easy casual thing. We put our sweat in everything, she said. It's like on some, bitch, you jump, I jump. If you with it, I'm with it. We're gonna do it. We work so hard on the music video. You're gonna see. That's thought put into that. Describing the creation of the track, Cardi said there were suggestions that they should go the Spanish route and have a Latin singer or rapper as the feature, but she knew Meg was the one to complete it. I hear her on this. I know it, she said. And when she sent her verse, I just looked at Nakers like, so, um, yeah, no. Like, because no, it gave WAP South America. It wouldn't have been a bad thing. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it wouldn't have been this polarizing if Cardi and Meg had been diversifying themselves all this while. And I said this in my last video and the monologue of this video, the girls can't diversify themselves and that's why people are shifting. When Cardi first came out, she had a diverse catalog of songs, especially on Invasion of Privacy. And I think that's why the album did so well. She had Be Careful, she had Bartier Cardi, and then she also had I Like It. All different sounds, all different subject matter. So I think Meg and Cardi should have done something more so like I like it because that would have been so much more well perceived versus the bongo song. I think they could have also added another Latin artist to really stamp the song. I like Bia. I know Bia has loyalty to Nicki but she would have ate and left a hefty tip. I really did like when Cardi spoke Spanish at the end. Like I feel like if she did a song where she's just going back and forth in Spanish and English it would go crazy. Like when Bia did the song Besito with G Herbo. I love that song. It gave a good twist of Latin and hip hop. Now, hear me out. What I'm about to say is probably gonna get me canceled and y'all may unsubscribe just off of this. But I feel like if Jocelyn Hernandez, I know, I know y'all, had a verse on this song in straight Spanish, it could have had some potential. See, my thing with Jocelyn is she goes so hard at music and my true unpopular opinion is that her music isn't the worst thing that I've heard. Like some of her songs are actual bop bops. Like that boom cha cha can definitely turn me up. And I think Jocelyn sounds good when she speaks Spanish. Granted, I don't understand Spanish, so I'm sure some of you Spanish speakers are gonna say, hell nah, Chama. But to the foreign ear, it vibes. Being that both Cardi and Jocelyn are Latina women and from Love and Hip Hop, I'm so surprised that they've never worked together. Do they have beef? Somebody let me know. So for bongos, I like the visuals, I like the beat, but the lyrics are mid to me. I like Megan's verse, but overall, I'll give it a C minus, and most of that grade is because of the visuals. Like I said, people were mixed. There were a lot of people who weren't feeling the song overall, but I think the general consensus was that the video was appealing, the hype was there, the ladies did well with choreography and the scenes as they always do, but the lyrics and the replayability, which isn't even a word, just fell short. In my opinion, if they're just making fun songs, I don't get what's so hard about writing a good fun song where you don't have to be too lyrical, but you can try a little bit to say something. I feel like for Meg, this comes easy to her. And I also want to add for Meg, this was her debut. This was her comeback. This was her stepping back out there. And I wish she would have dropped a solo song first and then did this with Cardi. Because I feel like the hype for new music for both of them kind of dwindled because this song was underwhelming to the public, but I think they have time to redeem and come back with something better next time. Woo, I've come such a long way. I used to grind these joints up. So moving on to point 1B, Lotto and Sexy Red were featured on the remix to the song Peaches and Eggplants by Young Nudie. Now I've heard this song all over IG Reels and TikTok. It's just a viral song to me. And I guess it's just a big hit right now because as much as I don't know who Young Nudie is for real, I've been hearing this song. It goes a little bit like this. What you doing, son? Boom, 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 boom. 
So I did go watch the initial video to the original and it was pretty typical raunchy rapper visuals. It's like, I'll be shocked, but not really shocked because I've seen this imagery so many times now, but also it's still crazy to me that we have gone this far as a generation. So when I saw the video for the remix with Lotto and Sexy Red, I was like, okay. So they're doing a rendition of the original song with the booty shaking, the emphasis on the fat booties and the sex, 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 sex. So Young Nudie is a 30 year old rapper from East Atlanta, Georgia. This song has blown up. His original video has almost 30 million views. And really the only part I really know is bow, 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 bow in your hoe. That's all I know. When Sexy Red started her verse talking about some bow, 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 none of my coochie, bow, 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 slap on my booty, bow, 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 all in my stomach, bow, 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 got a bitch running. Now let me drop the beat to address this comment I got the other day, okay? This one joint gonna say, I don't agree with this video because we don't keep the same energy with male rappers. If you don't like her, don't watch her. And Chama, you're not a better rapper than her. I'm sorry. So I said, I do keep the same energy with male rappers, done several videos about them, and I'm definitely a way better rapper than Sexy. I mean, by far. And then they said, you're not though. I'm sorry, I like your channel, but your bars don't hit. And I just finished with, I'm sorry, but I'm all for opinions. But to say that Sexy Red is way better at rapping than me is beyond crazy. Bars don't hit? I've never heard Sexy Red say one bar, not one. And I'm only offended because you could have said any other rapper, but definitely not her. I honestly would block you, but it's not that deep. Time will show you why you should have never said this bullshit tonight. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. Chama, why are you even entertaining this nonsense? But it's really because the delusion of people thinking Sexy Red is a good rapper is just beyond me. Does she have bops? Yes. Does she have fun? Yes. Does she have club bangers that will turn you up yes but is she a talented rapper especially after that verse on peaches and eggplants remix no bitch because no and some of y'all feel like why does it matter not every rapper has to be lyrical and that's like me saying why does it matter if lebron james can't shoot he's six foot nine for his sport and his profession it does matter. Stop trying to dumb down an art just so that your faves can feel better. I've realized a lot of young people are so okay with this because y'all are on that no child left behind wave. Y'all think everyone deserves a participation trophy. Y'all think everyone deserves an A plus just for trying. And that is not only not how life works, but also it's offensive to those who really work hard at their art. Imagine if an AI wrote my YouTube scripts, would y'all still be invested and give me props for whatever draws you to my content? No. So stop moving the goalposts to include your faves at the finish line. I'm not saying leave them behind. I'm saying know your place. I mean, come and see insulto. A Nigerian auntie wouldn't even insult me like that. Telling me sexy red is better than me. Hell, that just deserves an automatic block. See, I like to make my haters mad mad. It's just funny to me because I'm just going to come back with another video reiterating my thoughts and opinions that I refuse to stray away from. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard sexy red's verse. And I'm sorry, but no one is going to make me feel bad per saying. Nah, that ain't it, y'all. Listen, man. Uh, now, I feel like for Lotto, we all know Lotto was a good rapper. She saved the song per se. I caught the bars and the disses and I was like, why didn't they just have Lotto? It made no sense to include Sexy Red other than she's popular right now. So let's use her for views and attention. I also feel like Lotto shouldn't or doesn't have to focus so much on being sexy because she is the stereotypical desired look for women, at least on social media. So it still baffles me a bit that she was on a kid's show rapping back in like 2015, 16. The song was a remix, so in my opinion, they they didn't really need a remix. I was kind of happy that Sexy and Lotto work together so people can have full transparency between talent and rubbish. Sexy Red didn't even try in her verse and I wasn't disappointed being that I had no expectations, but I still felt like, how and why is she famous? I just realized it's not because she's authentic. That is only part of it. It's because people want to feel that everyone and anyone should be able to make it. Does that make sense? I think sometimes it's not about the image these women are pushing. Like she knows what's up with that. But I feel like the reason why this is all redundant and the same is because the bar was dropped so low that any and everyone can get on and people want to be able to feel like their non-talented selves deserve a spot at the table with little to no effort. Because when you stand for something, the new 2023 narrative is to call people a hater and I mean, people are so afraid of those labels that people just shut up and let anything fly. This soft ass generation, so entitled. So I wanted to read some of the comments that's on Instagram. Someone said, ladies, y'all not tired of being hypersexualized. How am I supposed to protect y'all and y'all image when y'all out here allowing rappers to dog walk y'all and y'all licking on plastic eggplants for dollars? SMH, I'm disgusted. Someone said LMFAO and folks wonder how Afrobeats and Latin music are taking over. Nobody listens to this except hood rats. Somebody else said hypersexualized lyrics 
lyrics and images of black women influence how the rest of the world see and treat our women and how young black girls see and treat themselves. I really wish we would do better because we have so much more to offer than constantly objectifying ourselves. And just a side note on that one, I know there was a lot of y'all saying like, Sexy Red does not represent all black women. Of course she doesn't, but y'all ate y'all words because here it is a few days later and you had four female artists, two of which that are black, one is a Latina and one is biracial, but all of them appeal to black audiences and they drop the song like this. So what is your excuse now? Of course, Sexy Red doesn't represent all black women, but what is your excuse now? Because these are some of the biggest artists and this song is a global song. This imagery is what's being pushed. Oh, some of y'all just be, oh my God, I don't know what be going through your head. Y'all be, y'all be saying anything to take up for these people. But anyway, someone said, nobody, female rap artists, Pum 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 booty 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 pum 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 booty 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 which I agree. Another person said, and we thought Trina was wild back in our days. She's a saint compared to these words coming out these girls' mouths like laud. Another person said, music nowadays is just so disgusting and tasteless and classless. Another person said, Jesus, please strap on your sandals. We are ready. Another person said, it's a hard no for me. I'm tired of all these songs saying the same things. Another person said, no, y'all supported this all this time. Oh, sex. Sexy Red So Real, I Love Her, Oh Big Lotto, LOL. Y'all run their numbers up but complain in the comments and don't support non-secular music or artists. So what's the problem, LOL? This is what y'all selling based on demand, the consumers, y'all. And that one I a thousand percent agree, it's the consumers. Someone said this is a downgrade for Lotto and then someone also said I'm only 30 and still be like, is this really what the kids are listening to nowadays? I think for both projects, I was underwhelmed and y'all know I'm a hater so yes, I didn't really care for either song at all. I think bongos may grow on people just because of the two big names on the song, but I feel like I'm watching a funeral for rap music on both sides. Nobody is coming with anything that makes me want to be a fan. I'm a fan of some of these joints like Meg, of course, but it's like I'm wavering in certain cases because I'm also tired. I don't know what's next and what the solution is, but these joints are going to just keep doing what they're doing. The consumers who I blame are going to keep hyping it up and making it last, and rap is going to keep hanging on for dear life. The shift is happening right now. I told y'all so. Let's see what else is going to happen and stay tuned. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my song, Let's Go. It is out on all platforms. And for you haters, I promote my song in every video. Uh, you just want to promote your song because Sexy Red, you hater. I literally promote my song in every video and I'm going to continue. So go stream that, okay? Link down below. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. Can you talk about something else? What's going What's on? That? Went to school, got a degree. I always say it in my song. Nigerian parents raised me by the book. Right. And now look, big stage, heavyweight, money day, Come business Come good. On. Model girls always looking pretty, just like how they should. I know it's haters saying that I started acting Hollywood. This is how you get when you know you finally getting Let good. And go. this is how you act when it's people to get out the hood. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Team Cheeks, Kim, Murray, Chi, Ray, Nance, Jaden, Dominique. Sorry I ain't been back, but my talent's an anomaly. And RIP, my cousin Mike, I know he would be proud of me. Dislocating elbows, cause now I'm getting out of reach. Tiptoeing to the top, and I ain't even try to creep. They like it when I preach, and trust me, baby, I ain't for the week. Drones acting like me trying to leash, but I just want peace. New school rapper, but my style's really antique. He liking what he see. Yeah, daddy, come and take a seat. Uh, yeah, daddy, come and take a seat with me. QC, cause I might be falling deep.